Alright, hello everybody, it is MSatellite and today I'm here with the first video against the Teemo on this channel. I say first because I'm really kind of, uh, I really hope I'll be able to upload more videos of me beating Teemo as Garen, because, I mean, everybody hates Teemo, but Garen is just one of those champions who hate Teemo the most. But, yeah, I, I this, this game proves that you can beat Teemo with Garen, and he isn't really a counter to you. If you don't give him kills early early game which is very hard but whatever uh, we'll just I'll just show you a few I'll just concentrate on giving you a few tips on how to beat him and practically most ranged enemies because you know these tips tips apply to Teemo but also to to kind of a lot more um, to a lot more you know champions now, I don't exactly remember how this game went now I, I know for sure I win it because I wouldn't probably I would probably not show it off to you because it's no it's not instructive on how to play Garen at all like it's not like I make my videos focused on on you know being guides but I like them when they give you something else to work with and I believe that you know beating Teemo is something really important many of you Garen players out there or people who want to approach Garen will like seeing because Timo's counts considered to be your main counter, but he really isn't if you if you manage to play well against him. This was not a ranked game. I have actually beaten a lot of Timos in ranked games because you know they just pick insta lock Timo when they see Garen and they make a big mistake because Timo's only gotten a few uh, up to 30 or 40 minions and then Garen gets the edge, but whatever. Uh, you guys are gonna get to see some things that I also put in the Garen montage. This proves that this this video was actually recorded a long time ago, but I'm try I'm trying to play Zed now, and since he's my first mid laner, yeah, yeah, I'm starting the mid lane with the hardest one of the hardest champs to master down there, and even though I really should not do that, I I decided to do it. And it's going pretty well, so maybe one day you're also going to see some Zed on this channel, but I don't promise anything as of right now. So I just missed that minion, as you can see, which is a big mistake. Every single minion counts against Teemo. This is a general advice, but I don't remember if I actually give credit to this in my video. I'm probably going to miss a lot of farm, but whatever. So uh, as you can see, he blinded me, but for some reason the damage and the silence were applied normally, which is very nice, because the blind stops the damage, but it doesn't stop the silence, the silence, so usually you would score the silence and miss the damage, but in this case I didn't, uh, I didn't miss any, so whatever. But yeah, so um, I'm just, uh, I'm just, I'm just a little sorry that I couldn't upload a video with me beating Trindamere or Volibear, because this was one, one of my subscribers, one of you guys asked me, asked me recently on a video to upload uh, me, uh, a gameplay of me beating Trindamere, because they, you know, he's this guy. I don't remember his name on YouTube. I'm sorry, mate, but you know, I, you asked me to show how to beat Trindamere and Volibear because he was having difficulty, but I didn't, I didn't. I didn't play Garen a lot this week, and when I played him, I ended up fighting an Elise. And even though I completely be beat her ass and carried the ranked game that I played against her, you can probably go check my check out my match history if you don't believe me. But uh, I didn't I didn't have fraps on at the at that moment, so the gameplay was not recorded, and you'll probably never see it again. But at least I played against Elise. I'm probably gonna update the guide on Mobile Fire with the with her matchup a little bit better because. You know, the matchup there is written in a very logical manner, but I didn't play against an Elias before, so it was my first time against Elias and I completely dominated it, so I'm really, really glad uh, it went well, because it was a ranked game, and, you know, it's always nice to win ranked games and to carry them. So, yeah, let's get into some tips for beating Team. Well, first of all, you need to land your Silence, of course, and even if he blinds you, keep going, because the Silence will still be applied. And it's nice, because if you silence him, he's not going to be able to activate his uh, speed buff allowing you to uh, deal a pr pr nifty large amount of damage from your judgment and as you can see this guy was tanking my damage very hard he blinded me I'm going to die because of damage over time and ignite he this team went with ignite so it's weird I don't really think it's the way you should build Teemo I think Teemo is better with teleport because you know it's just that much annoying but he didn't pick teleport so I don't remember I think I got the first blood I didn't see that I was I'm watching the video as I commentate over it but I don't remember what I saw well I'm a little distracted right now well whatever but it, it, it's good it's one for one it's not really nice because he gets the money to buy stuff because you know and that's terrible because Teemo buying stuff is always a terrible terrible deal while yeah I was, I was just spamming my right click to get Jarvan but I don't get 
there in time. But yeah, I still I got the money as well and the experience as well. So by now I only have eight farms, so Timo's doing a very good job at zoning me. So you know, I don't really know if there's ever ever a good Timo player. Like I don't think something like that exists. I think Timo sucks, whoever plays Timo sucks and whatever. That's what I think and probably many of you will agree with me, but whatever. I just that's just the way I see it really. So um this team was doing a good job at zoning me and poking me a lot. Now, I don't know why he wasted so much time allowing me to get all the money probably he could have gotten from First Blood in case he got it back thanks to minions. But uh, from now on, I don't think he's going to ever kill me again in lane. So I wait for him. One good tip for you is when you, as you can see, the number one thing you want to do against a ranged opponent is start with boots. Now, I know it sounds a little weird because against Teemo you might want to start with health to be a little tankier and it works, it, it can work but since Teemo has a movement speed buff you know this applies to every ranged enemy but against Teemo it's even more important that you get boots because he has gotten a fairly a nifty fast movement speed on his own and he's gotten a movement speed buff from a from an ability so it's that's a huge problem for you because you can't you don't have gap close or anything else anything similar to that you're Garen, so you need to run in front of your. You need to run to your enemies and to kill them, to have a, a shot at killing them. So, if you don't get there with your Q and you have to rely on your flash, that's probably not gonna work out for you because he will not be a menace in lane, which you totally wanna be. So, yeah, as you can see, I'm gonna kill him now because he's just dumb. I silenced him and he didn't manage to activate his movement speed buff in time, so I managed to kill him. And he didn't have level six because he wasted too much time at the base. So I ended up getting my level 6 before his level 6 and he wasn't able to kite me with mushrooms all the way back to his tower. And now even if he does, I'm probably going to have so much tankiness that he will probably never be able to kill me. Now many people probably will disagree with my start, like I completed, I finished my Mercury Strats and I have only started experimenting with the Hex Drinker, which is probably one of the best first items against a ranged, uh, not a ranged, an AP carry enemy and since most AP carries do have uh, range like they are ranged you know it kind of does make sense for you to uh, you know to to start with a hex drinker but I am completely I brainlessly addicted to mobility like maybe it's because I'm starting with the uh, I'm starting playing with the pl with champions that are not like you know Garen Darius who don't really have great mobility but you know, in general, I really like mobility, and it's important with Garen against Teemo that you get there. If you don't get to to Teemo in time to get the damage dealt, you will not do this. You will not kill him, you will not win the lane. So, that's how important boots are. It's probably nice for you to build Swiftness boots against Teemo and ranged AP carries as well, because, you know, Swiftness boots give you a really good edge in movement speed. But since Teemo deals so much magic damage, you are gonna need the protection. You will need the protection, like, at all times. So, that's why I would recommend that you do get Mercury Strats as your first item against Teemo. And then I'm going to build a Spectre Scowl. Why do I, why do I build a Spectre Scowl instead of a Hex Drinker? Now, very simple. It's very simple. Teemo is behind me by now, because I don't think I've gotten more farm than him. He's probably gotten more farm than I have. But I have earned more money, because I've gotten two kills. And my burst is still enough to kill him, so I don't need more damage. While the Spectre Scowl gives me a very good help with poke. Because Teemo's the kind of champions that po the champion that pokes you often. And, you know, that just... That's just uh, very, very... It's Well, that was a nice kill steal by Wukong. I got mad at first, but then I realized it's okay, because, you know, I'm probably going to be able to snowball the lane anyway. So, um... So, against Teemo... You know, Hippo is not like one of who trades with you. He just pokes you with the blind and uh, the and potentially with the uh, knocks you straps. You know, mushrooms. But he doesn't really come in and trade with you to the point that you will need an hex drinker. And plus, if you get to the 30% of health in which the hex drinker activates against Timo, you're probably being kited, so you'll die anyway. It's not that big of a deal. It's still a very good item. So for those of you who start with the Hex Drinker against Teemo, you don't do a wrong thing. It's just that I prefer mobility over damage and uh, health regen bonuses and help against poke and health against, uh, you know, uh, a shield. 
because the shield I think comes useful more in the late game when people start to you know get uh, a l when AP carries start to get a lot of damage. So you know, tip number one is to get boots against pretty much any any enemy range, especially those with with slows, because like. Uh, let's just put it this way. If an enemy has um, a snare, a stun, in that case, tenacity is just better. So you're, you're better off with Mercury Strength. But if your opponent does not have a, a, a stun, instead they have, I don't know, it's Malphite, they have a slow... Well, Malphite is actually melee, so that was not the best example. But maybe, I don't know, Lysandra, but she also has a snare. You know, there's probably a lot of AP carries that I'm forgetting to mention right now that have slows and not snares and stuff like that and against those then you want to get swift boots to swiftness because they're reduced by 60 i think 60 or 40 i don't remember a big amount of per a big percentage amount of the slow you will receive and that's just very valuable for garen you know because you're running you're a running champion and you need to reduce the slow it's important that you reduce the slow so you know, swiftness, the boots of swiftness are very nice in Garen against ranged enemies, just not against Teemo. I just wanted to get a lot of magic resistance, because against Teemo, you know, Teemo counters Garen in that he's able to get to get far. He's able to run away with his uh, movement speed buff. And since Garen does not have a gap close, that's just so... Oh my god, I'm sorry for interrupting myself, but that was just orgasm, guys, man. The moment when a Teemo pops in a bush and gets completely fucked by Garen like that, it's just too nice. Too, too nice. Too nice, too, too nice. Man, I was that was just brilliant. And I'm just ignoring his damage by now because I'm too tanky. That's why I like getting Mercury Strats. Because, you know, I wanted to rush the, the tankiness. Teemo counters, or at least people think he counters Garen, because he has... Um, because he has the ability to just run away while still outputting damage thanks to both mushrooms and he's blind. Now, this applies to most enemies, but with Garen it's all another thing because Garen, similarly to Volibear, does not have a gap close and has no crowd controls apart from silence, which is not like the best crowd control for avoiding being kited. So, you know, Teemo just. That's why Teemo. That's why people think Teemo counters Garen. But apart from that, there's really nothing else to it. Like, if you build tankiness, if you build magic resistance, if you get the stats that you need, you are going to win the lane. As you can see, I'm just completely ignoring farm. I'm getting to a point into which I think I'm going to get really better into farm during the mid-game because Timo's just so behind, I can basically just free farm all day and ignore his damage, which is one of the best feelings that you can get playing as Garen. So, yeah. So... That's why against the team I would recommend boots of uh, uh, Mercury Strats because you know I just wanted to rush that magic resistance because once you get the tankiness and the mobil the mobility to get to you to Teemo without losing without dying you're done you won the lane you don't even need damage as you can see because Teemo's just so squishy even though he builds Le usually people will build Leandris and stuff so that's just that's how important Mercury strats are against Teemo but against any other AP carry or ranged carry you can probably get boots of sweetness or mobility boots but I would recommend mobility boots because they probably if the enemy manages to put damage on you you'll never get to them and you're probably gonna die so yeah so that's the first tip the second tip against a ranged enemy is to use bushies like now you know that when you enter a bush even though the enemies see you enter a bush, it's still valuable for you because they can't auto attack you. Or I mean, if they if they want to, they have to come inside of the bush as well, which is what you want. Because if they come inside of the bush, they'll just get a freaking sword on their head. They will. And Timo, is especially Timo, he doesn't get to to launch his blind on you. He doesn't get to land blind on you because because you're in a brush and you're in a bush and he needs to get inside of that bush to land the blind so you'll probably silence him before he can blind you and that's just so so valuable you don't get an idea how valuable that is because you get the Q damage on him now my Q's at rank 3 it deals a ridiculously high amount of damage a ridiculously high amount of damage and that's why I need to land it if I miss it it's a huge problem and as you can see I was gonna recall then something weird happened I made him see that I was here and he probably saw the grump moving Thought I was going to just, uh, you know, go kill the Gromp, but the truth is that I was just waiting for him. 
Now he's not worth ma much gold, but the satisfaction of killing a Teemo in lane five times, well, practically on my own, because that Wukong gang pretty much just stole the kill. Like, Teemo was turning around and I managed to land an auto attack on him anyway, so. And as you can see, this mushroom probably put me at a disadvantage because I got the damage. I'm probably gonna die. I think I die here. Yeah, I die. Because I underestimate Jarvan's damage, and I also fail because I don't have any armor on me, so he just is able to deal lots of damage to me, and I can't do anything about it. So now I'm thinking if I should get damage or armor, and since I already have the Brutalizer, I just get some more armor. So, yeah. Uh, so that's what was, you know, the basics, you know, that you need to use bushes. It's probably something that you already knew anyway, but I'm telling it just, you know, to put more suggestions into this little trips and ticks video. Another tip I can give you is to land the silence against ranged opponents because many ranged opponents have them have a have an escape and if you get them rid of that they're pretty much dead meat and that's exactly what you want. So uh, if you manage to land your silence then chances are you probably kill them. Well not probably not while your silence is at level one unless you use your judgment first, your E first but uh, at level 2 or 3 silence lasts for a lot longer and you can probably spend a few more points into your Q, you know. If you see that the enemy is ranged and that is not like dumb enough for you to get close to them, you can probably mm, spend some more points into your, into, your, um, into your silence before going into the judgment. So that's probably one thing you can do and as you can see I killed Timo again. I don't know why it's worth 200 gold now. He was worth 150 before. He just probably his value got in, in, enlarged for some reason. I have no idea why really. Maybe just killed someone in another lane. I have no idea but whatever. So yeah as you can see it's kind of it's kind of easy. I mean it's not that hard really. You just gotta use the map at your advantage and build right. Like build more defenses that you would normally build against an AD opponent. Like if I'm facing an AD opponent I'll probably build a chain vest and boots and then I'm just going to go on with the damage. Against Teemo I just rushed Mercury Strats. Like I didn't even have anything else, just boots. I don't know how many people do that normally. It's weird. I, I believe it's weird. It's a little weird. But I do that all the time against Teemo because Teemo needs to deal damage early and he does not have those so freaking high base stats. He has them if you don't have any magic resistance. As soon as you get a little bit, you dominate. That's how it works. And that's why I think Teemo does not counter Garen. But whatever. It's always it's always a matter of uh, who plays who and I've seen so many Garens being completely destroyed by ranged opponents. Well, I personally never lo never lose a lane against them because they are the easiest people to kill once you manage to land your silence. So just spend a few more points into your Q and you're going to have a very a pretty big a very very bigger amount of uh, chances of being able to get them. Now as you can see I'm going to fail hard here because I just don't manage to put my focus on Corky well in the in the first place and that's just terrible. But the game overall is going to go well anyways. I'm 3 I'm 631 with 96 farm. It's not it's a very low amount of farm at this time. But it's still a decent amount of farm for one who's been practically zoned for the whole landing phase. I completely failed there. So, but I'm still with a good poor. I'm still relatively fed in that I have a lot of armor, a lot of magic resistance. Now I've also gotten a lot of health, and my brutalizer is up. And I already have the great boots for late game, which are Mercury Shreds. So yeah. What else can I tell you about winning against ranged opponent? You know, if the enemy a, a ranged opponent does not have an escape, it's gonna be a, a whole lot easier because you'll just get close to them and they'll just die like any other squishy enemy, like I don't know Jinx. I've never played against Jinx in lane, but I believe there are many other uh, ranged opponents who don't have an escape that you can just go with your Q into and destroy them. One of them, for instance, is Wayne. I have never, and I swear to God, I've never lost a lane against uh, Swain top. So many people pick Swain top when they see Garen and I never lose. Even with Darius I never lose because they have no escape. Swain has zero escapes. So he just he just disappears when Garen gets to him. You just need to wait for him to use his slow. It's important that you wait for people to use their slows and then you go on with the um, and then you go on with the uh, with your with your decisive strike into judgment and then you kill them. They die. I mean Swain does have a good sustain, but since I am 
I am addicted to Ignite. Uh, it's pretty hard for it's pretty hard for him to heal up all the damage he's gonna take from my burst. So yeah. What else? We have ten more minutes in this video. Gosh, I've talked so long and I'm already s and I'm already with my throat sick. Well, I'm kind of um, I've gotten a cold on me. You probably kind of realized that it c my voice may sound may sound a little weird and this team was completely well he completely fed me so you know it wasn't that bad about it but you know I got fed on him so he's not that great anyway and I don't see why you would complain against your teammates if you're not doing well but whatever whatever I'm always critical of myself who am I, I who am I to judge so yeah uh yeah so what what else can we add to this against the range of the opponent well Use flash to engage is, uh, it's you know, it's the kind of tip that I would give you if I thought you were dumb. But, but I don't think you're dumb. You probably saw me do that, and you would probably do. You probably do it yourselves with many champions. You use your flash to engage. Your flash to engage because it's just too nice of a gap close, and it gives Garen that little gap close that he lacks. That's what I tell to many people picking Ghost on Garen. I get it. Lower cooldown. You know. It's a little lasts for longer, allows you to get to your opponents if they have mobility spells. But the gap close on Garen is just something mandatory. You don't have it. Sometimes I even build distortion on my boots because I want more flashes. And I know it might sound weird, but building distortion on your boots gives you the opportunity to become very, very much like an assassin with a very long cooldown on your, uh, on your, on your. Uh, on your ultimate, on your you know engage method, but I still think I still think flash is the best way to initiate against a ranged opponent. Even if they don't have an escape, no one will expect you to just pop out with that flash. Like you've probably seen this with many of my videos, into which I completely destroy opponents with flash. Like they never expect me to be there instantly, and I activate flash as soon as I use my Q. So it's like they don't even have time to realize that I'm actually going to engage. They're just like, what the fuck? And they die because the silence prevents them from being able to escape. And if you have a brutalizer or even the black cleaver, they'll die so fucking fast. You will not even need to refresh the silence. So yeah, this is a video. This is part of the montage. And yes, guys, me and Wukong were not pre-made. I did not play with this guy before. And I don't even think I've played with him ever again so we just read our minds as soon as he saw so many enemies stunned by Vagar he just popped in with his uh, Nimbus strike and started spinning so I decided to do the same that was a, one of the best looking double spins ever uh, in my in my League of Legends history like I've never seen a Garen and a Wukong spin so well together and I loved it I really loved it it was amazing because, you know, just proof of Garen and Vugong being in a good team comp. So, you know, I tried to zone this uh, this Jarvan fourth away from Lucian. But he makes his way around and engages on Wukong, who's very powerful. But he uh, doesn't, he didn't really get to the point in which he gets his power spike. Because, like, Wukong sucks in the early game and he's just good in the mid game. This Wukong in our team was relatively fed, but it was still was not all that fed. So he still needed needed to wait for his uh, power spike, which is in the late game, and many of you probably know that. So I wanted to kill Nidalee, but this Jarvan prevented me from being able to practically do anything. Now this is I don't remember what happens here, but I think I'm gonna die. Yeah, I die because I get completely focused down by all sorts of CCs, and unfortunately, and that was really really terrible luck. I got completely broken by. Um, Timo's mushrooms, which you know, complete got me rid of a lot of health. And then Lucian comes in there and he's like, Oh, let's just go ahead and shoot her in the face, and she dies. So, yeah, use your flash and build distortion of your, on your boots, not early but late, because it's just too nice to have so many flashes at, flashes at your disposal to kind of complement for the, for the lack of mobility that Garen suffers from. So, yeah. What else? What else? What else, guys? I think we're almost done with the video, but we're almost done with the tips I have for you. Because, like, 
it's pretty much all the same. Of course, once you get Randuins, it's very easy to kill them, but unfortunately, most of the opponents who have ranged top lane are AP, so you will not be building Randuin's Omen. I've seen a Garen in a game recently who did very well in playing. I'm not gonna lie, he was very good with mechanics and stuff, but he was terrible with the build. He started building with damage, which is terrible for me. It's not the way Garen is supposed to be played and built. And he also kind of... Uh, focused on armor while he was against a Rumble. That's why Rumble managed to pill, to pick kills against him. Like, Rumble has... I mean, I've never lost lane against Rumble because he doesn't have damage. Like, not at all. And if you build the right set of uh, of uh, defenses against Rumble, you won't lose. That's, that's how it goes. And lucky for me, that spell shield prevented me from being knocked up by Jarvan. But unfortunately, Nidalee was starting to kind of get a little more tense and getting a few kills, but still, we were holding up. I waited a little bit for my health to regenerate before hopping back in, but I think I'm going to back in just uh, just to, just for fun, you know, just to kill a little more people. Because, you know, when you have Ignite and Flash, Ignite and the Ultimate on your, at your disposal, you almost always end up getting a kill because it's just a very powerful burst. Only your Ultimate and the ignite do pretty much all the damage for you except you know your ultimate only deals it with the enemies already being at a relatively low health so yeah as you guys can see i am already re regenerating fast because of my spirit visage being completed and i'm able to tank the dragon anyway because i'm just so freaking tanky and you know um that's that's just a little description of the video because i've kind of run out of tips for you i mean Boots, I've told you, get the randuins if you can, if your opponent is AD based. Yes, I've already told you, get boots first if you, if you, yeah, that's what I'm tell I already told you, get the flash and probably distortion in the late game too, and I have already tell you that. I think I'm pretty much, I think I'm done with tips, I'm sorry about this, but yeah, people probably, people think that with Garen, it's impossible to win some lanes. But the truth is that no lane is impossible to Garen because he's just not OP, but he's the kind of champion that has the good kit to win or at least to not lose and feed against everybody. Like people who feed with Garen just do not know how, just don't know what Garen is. He's a tank. There's no way you can feed with him. Even if you suck, you'll die often, but you won't feed. You'll die a couple of times in lane, maybe a few more times in the mid game, but you'll roll in team fights to kill squishies and be tanky will never fall off so there's no lane that Garen can't lose and Teemo does not counter Garen no one counters Garen the only one the only real counter to Garen might be Kyle but you can always flash into her too so as long as you do this smart as long as you build correctly you will dominate as Garen against ranged opponents so yeah let me quickly recap before the video ends get boots Use your flash to engage and use uh, distortion on your boots if possible. Make good use of bushes as they really give you as they really really give you the opportunity to get closer to your opponents with uh, less effort and probably to be able to deal a full burst of damage to them you know in form of a trade. That's one uh, that is one thing. Then I th then I think I think that's it. Just Focus on landing the silence and spend a few more points into your Q, into your silence, before you max your judgment. And that's pretty much it, guys. You won't lose against Teemo, and you will not lose against any other lane. So I was counterpicked, and I still did the most damage out of everyone, and taken the most. Best, best possible situation for a Garen player. Alright guys, thank you for watching this video. I hope you'll see you, I'll see you all next time on the next, my, on my next video. Bye.